lovely star shine lights my way to bed. Magic rainbows glisten in my head. Just like a child, I live in wonder. Hi, and welcome to Handmade by Dixie Tulip. I'm Mel, and thanks for stopping by. In today's video, I'm going to share a sewing magazine it's not really a sewing magazine it's a fabric magazine which i've not heard mentioned that often and i tried out a um issue of it um november time i think it was i'd got a long train journey to plymouth and i wanted something to read on there um, so i thought i would try out this magazine and it's called salvage magazine so it's not a normal sewing type magazine where you've got kind of projects to make and things like that it's about fabric um, it's what I will say is it's a really pricey magazine compared to a lot of the others so I purchased a digital version of it which was £9.95 if you get a print version I think it's £12.95 so it is pricey so I was interested to see whether I thought it was worth that amount of money so what I thought I would do is head over to the Salvage website to um, show you a little bit more about um, the types of things that they offer and then I was going to take you a peek inside my digital version and then I'll be back with you shortly um, and get some final thoughts. So I'll head over to the screen recordings now. Okay so here I am on the Salvage website um, so you've got kind of some news articles going along the top it shows you that you can buy the magazines either in digital or print form and you can also buy these gorgeous tote bags which use the front covers of the magazine which are all absolutely beautiful. I'm just going to go into the back issues of the magazine of which there are loads um, just so you can kind of see some of these beautiful front covers. So you can see the price there if you buy the whole collection it's nearly 600 pounds pricey so i'll just whiz through so you can sh so you can see the photography on these is absolutely beautiful so obviously there's uh, 92 issues i think so far I love that red dress, that's really given me an idea um, for a 60s style dress. And there we are at issue 00. So let me head over to the issue that I've purchased now so you can see what's inside. Okay, so let's take a look in my digital issue of Salvage magazine. What I'm not going to do is read the articles because this video would be about two hours long if I was to read all the articles, but I'm just going to skim through the magazine so you can see the type of content that's in there. So let's start with the front cover and how amazing is that, um, the, this, this silk outfit, it's absolutely gorgeous. This just gives a little bit of information about what this issue is about. So I will we'll read this bit so you know um, why the content is what it is. Um, and it starts by saying that Made in China 2025 is a government initiative which aims to move China away from being the world's factory producing cheap low quality goods due to lower labour costs towards producing higher value products and services. This vision for the future is in fact a return to the past as silk, one of the world's high-end fibres, was discovered in China. The oldest examples date to around 3630 BC and it was originally reserved for the elite. Silk was used as a currency as well as clothing and the monopoly of the production was closely a closely guarded secret for over a thousand years. So that's what this issue is about primarily is about silk and some of the history of silk. This story is about um, mud silk, so a process where iron rich mud 
is um, used as part of the dyeing, pro dyeing and finishing process. It basically involves spreading iron-rich river mud on silk dyed with an extract from the Zhulang root and it's baked in the long hot summer sun for several days and that's just absolutely beautiful just looking at the texture of that silk is amazing. This just set, um, gives a, um, some information about some things that you can research. For example, these, um, these dolls here are made from the upcycled waste fabric from clothing manufacturers and they're handcrafted by Afghan women refugees in India. And you can actually buy, buy these dolls. This is just encouraging you when you are buying gifts, um, bear in mind this issue was pre-Christmas, to buy less and buy better, so buying with a conscious, making sure that the things that you buy, um, people have been paid fairly um, for it, etc, things like that. There's one of those lovely dolls that you can buy. Beautiful photograph there of a silk gown. Um, this article goes into the history of the silk scarf, a um, bit about how it was produced, where, when and how the silk was used um, as a form of currency. Some beautiful embroidered fabrics and the history about those. story about um, people in, uh, in Afghanistan, um, about what they do against all the odds and how sil silk clothing links into their culture. It's a beautiful photo. Talks about how embroidery is such a part of their, their lifestyle as well. This is about the oldest haberdashery in Paris. I've actually seen this haberdashery before on um, Escape to the Chateau. This looks at baby hats of China, which are made of silk. It goes into detail about how they're made and why they're made and what the purpose of them is. This is a history piece um, about a gentleman back in 1565 um, who was arrested in the city of London and his crime was for wearing a very monstrositous and outrageous pair of hose, which of course were made from silk. So that tells you that story. This article is about a master silk printer and this was around World War I time. This is the Silk Road. Let's look at those colours. And then there's that beautiful, um, that beautiful garment. So it says um, that this is a dress and jacket from the An Amazing Journey in Childhood Dreams collection 2008 absolutely beautiful the detail on that is amazing and then the silk kimonos this is going into information about silk um, and the silver screen This is just showing inside um, somebody's house who was known as the King of Silk. This is a bit about the production of silk, so inside the cocoon.
and this is a more modern article um, so a the summer house find inspiration in the uh, Ron of Kutch as it looks like this is what's inspired these garments So this article is about the ballerina's tutu. And then inside a gallery. And then this article is about um, garments being made in women's prisons and what the thoughts are about that after um, it sparked some discussion with the Oranges and New Black series. Again, there's a more modern article about how silk is used. This is giving you some information to read pointing you, signposting you to different um, things to, to review. A little bit about what's coming next. And that's it. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed that look inside my issue of Selvage magazine. Um, my thoughts, I really enjoyed the magazine. It really did feel like I was reading history. I was learning about different cultures. I think especially as a lot of the kind of standard sewing magazines has been um, some bad feelings about them uh, recently because they're not necessarily all that inclusive whereas this magazine I felt I learned a lot about different um, cultures, about the history of how different fabrics have been made, some um, fun stories um, about information about those particular types of fabrics. So I felt like it was an enjoyable read like a book would be an enjoyable read rather than a magazine where I'm flicking through the pages but I've purchased it because there was a free pattern with it for example that I wanted to try. So um, do I think it's worth £9.95 for a digital copy? I certainly wouldn't be subscribing to it so that I'm paying that amount each and every month. I do think it's quite an excessive amount for a magazine. Um, I didn't feel that I'd been ripped off um, necessarily. I thought, as I say, you know, it's it's more than 100 pages. There was lots of really resourceful information in there. And I liked the fact that adverts and things that were in the magazine were very ethical um, makes and pointed you in the direction of learning more about what is available out there on the kind of the ethical side of things, which is something that I'm really, really trying to educate myself in. So I didn't feel like, oh my word, what a waste of money, what a waste of £9.95 that was. Um, I did feel enriched from reading it. Um, but as I say, I don't think I would be subscribing that I pay that amount every month. What I may do is treat myself every once in a while and get a um, a, an issue whenever I've got a spare £9.95 and I'm treating myself. So do let me know in the comments what your thoughts are about the magazine but also let me know what your favourite magazines are. I used to buy quite a lot of the sewing magazines but I haven't for a long time because personally for me I find the patterns that come free with the magazine aren't necessarily what I would go out and buy if I was choosing a pattern and then I'm not sure what they're priced at now but let's say they're six to seven pounds I could go and buy a pattern um, I didn't necessarily need the magazine with the other information in there but do let me know in the comments below what your favorite um, sewing magazines are and are there any magazines that you enjoy um, which are a little bit like salvage that aren't necessarily the ones that we all know about because I'd love to check out any um, new things to read so that's it that's all I wanted to share today I hope that you found that beneficial um, do like the video 
and remember to subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already and hit that little alarm bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Have a wonderful week and I will see you very soon. Bye!